I hate to say it, it's only going to be going one way, and that is Novak Djokovic will win Wimbledon this year. I can't see him losing. Simply too good. So dominant here at Wimbledon, and I reckon he's going to get two, number 24 and five Wimbledons in a row. The only person that can stop Novak Djokovic in this tournament is Novak Djokovic. Andy That's... Murray. Oh, oh. oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Or as Sir Andy will come on. Other than that, it'll be Djokovic against his own body. Can he keep his body fit for the whole two weeks? If he can, probably name on the trophy. She has the easiest draw out of everyone. And I feel that Eager will win Wimbledon. She had practice tournament this time. She didn't have one last year. She probably learned from her mistake. I'm going to be going for Dola Vecchi, the one with the 17th easiest draw according to AI. And I'm going to be having Dola Vecchi winning Wimbledon 2023. I would love to see Novak Djokovic take home his 24th Grand Slam title this year at Wimbledon. And I would like to see Sabalenka win as well. Sebastian Korda claiming his first Grand Slam title. On the women's side, I'm going past the bingo. Kicking off on the men's side, Novak Djokovic will have as many Grand Slams as there are hours in the day. And on the women's side, I'm going with Anz Jabeur. She's going to be your women's champion. Let's go! Another big win for Novak Djokovic in the men's singles. And for the women's, I think Ons Jabeur is going to make us very happy and she's going to take the women's Wimbledon title. Djokovic's dreams of a calendar slam are going to be shattered again. And it's the little Spaniard that's going to do it. Carlitos Alcaraz will win Wimbledon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Game to Love, the YouTube channel and podcast. Today, we'll be watching some Wimbledon 2023 coverage and a third round match between Iga Swiatek and Petra Martic. They're underway. I do apologize about the delay to get you guys all tuned in to this match and inside the tournament. The score is currently 2 1 first set. Swiatek leading, trying to consolidate her early break. 30 all in this service game. Appreciate you all for joining and watching in. Um, this is one of the couple of different times I've done some commentary for Game to Love. Always appreciate them sharing the platform with me. Um, my name is miles david and my twitter and other social handles are right down below uh, at tuned into tennis is where you can find me giving more commentary via socials and also my podcast about the world of professional tennis with modeled with spin on it so there's a little plug right there but let's get into today's match Completely unrelated to the actual tennis, but I think Wimbledon kind of makes this uh, a little bit of a talking point with the fact that they have a strict uh, dress code or somewhat strict dress code. This is the first time I've seen Suyatek wear this particular white dress, so uh, let's see if it brings her any luck. She's facing a break point here for Martic. Let's walk through this point. 30-40 on Suyatek serve. Martic with a break point here to even it up at 2-all. Suyatek with a second serve. Let's see what happens. So I to get the second serve in and dumps the very next backhand in the middle of the net. Martic evens it up at two all. I there's some people who have made some inferences and some um uh, just assumptions that this match is pretty much going to be a walkover for Igor Swiatek, and that may have been the case on every other surface that the WTA tour plays on but i feel like on grass because martic has such variety in her game she could pose some problems for Iga Swiatek, and um Iga Swiatek is not necessarily the most comfortable on grass she's getting there her last two rounds were definitely the most comfortable i've seen of her on the surface but martic presents some problems and so far it looks like it could be a very interesting match for sure So we got to take opens up this March service game with a point at the net, putting away a really um, less than good drop shot for Martic. Love 15 in this two all game. Like 
Adrian said aggressive play in this game for Martich. I agree. I think she has the ability in her game to play aggressively, as she does on the second point, serves in volleys, and really takes advantage of it. Puts away a very, very easy shot from Suyatek at the net, 15 all. Yeah, I think she knows that she needs to be aggressive and take the initiative when she can against Suyatek, because Suyatek is going to want to do that her own self. So got to keep it, got to keep an eye on that for sure. Let's see. Good day, the compliment king. Thanks for dropping on by. I appreciate it. Lunara Miles, who will win women's Wimbledon? I was leaning, um, and I kind of still am on Arena Sabalenka. I think the grass just accentuates all the good things that she does pretty naturally and habitually on a tennis court as far as taking big cuts and um and dominating from the back of the court and kind of making the center of the court her wheelhouse and having people run all over and having big serves and just being aggressive, right? Um, but today's matchup against Gracheva, she um, made that tighter than I thought it would have been. Not that Gracheva is not a bad player. I just thought Serena, uh, Arena, excuse me, would have had more firepower. So uh, she wobbled a bit in that match, but she eventually got the W. So I'm still leaning on Sabalenka to be holding the trophy, I think. But we'll see. There's still a lot of tennis left to be played, for sure. All right, let's check back into this match. Oh, wow. Big return of serve from Iga Swiatek off the backhand. Return of serve winner, 1540 on Martic serve. So it's a little bit of a break fest so far. Martic just broke in the game prior and she has to defend two more break points from we gotta take here. Let's see what she can do. Cameras are showing the Suyatek camp who is ever faithful. Let on the first serve from Martic trying to break uh, trying to defend these two break points. Good call, Adrian. I was I had one eye on that match as well. Kenan and Svitolina. That's a really good, interesting matchup because I believe I should double check this here. I, I'll do it after the point because I believe the winner of that may play the winner of this or they're in the same section whereabouts of the draw. A little cat and mouse point that Sviatek wins with one of the hardest shots in tennis to hit, which is the over-your-shoulder, one-handed backhand smash. That was a nice little uh, moment from Sviatek. She's now back up a break, 3-2 in this first set. Let's see. Hey, Gary. I have to be honest, I can't see your picture in full in full flight, so I'm not 100% sure, but I do appreciate you stopping back in. And let's see if I can pull up a scoreboard here and get things a little bit more visually pleasing for you guys because I think that's important. Let's see. Bear with me, by the way. I'm not uh, the biggest pro at talking watching a match and doing the production here on the live stream. So bear with me. I do appreciate you guys watching though. I definitely appreciate that. And while you're here, if you're not subscribed to game to love, make sure you do that. They're definitely on their road to 100 K. I'm a subscriber. I love the channel and yeah, if you're not subscribed, it's free. Why not check it out? I know what I was doing. See, multitasking, multitasking. I wanted to see where Suyatek and Kennan and Fidelina were all in the women's singles draw. So let's see. Let's see where that matchup is in the women's draw. Suyatek is currently playing Martic. Ah, I misspoke. Suyatek is playing Martic right now, and the winner of that match takes on the winner of Belinda Bencic and Magdalen Nett who I believe are, are they playing right now or did Benchich already win that match? Let's see. <laughs> Women in singles. 
Yeah, Belinda Belinda won that match in straight set. So the winner of this Marchich and Sviatek match takes on Belinda Benchich in the fourth round. And I'm pretty sure they're going to have a day off in between, I think, because I think their whole section of the draw is pretty good as far as scheduling and stuff. So we got to take up 30 love in this 3-2 service game, by the way. Hey, Cedric, thanks for joining the YouTube stream. Hi, Sneehill. Hey, Gerald, bear with me for a second while I try to get that scoreboard for you guys, okay? Hey, Ghosty. Yeah, I would have loved to see a Svitolina, excuse me, misspoken, the Daniel Collins versus Iga Swiatek match. I think that's a good one. I wish it would have happened for sure. All right, live matches. Where's my scoreboard? Where's my scoreboard? There we go. I think I'm getting the hang of this, actually. Let's see. Share screen. Hey, there we go. All right, we're looking at this 30, 15 point, 30 all point, I should say, excuse me. There we go. Can you guys let me know if you see the scoreboard? Great. I'm glad you guys can see it. All righty. All right, let's check back into this match. 3-2, 40-30. So we got Tech trying to consolidate that break. I think a consolidation here would actually go very far for Sweet Tech. She just slipped, by the way, and which has been a complete trend this whole first week of the championships. Most of the slips and stuff have been on the backcourt, but hers was kind of in the middle of the court. So that's usually where it's the most green. Djokovic is playing on center court after Swiatek and March to finish their match. Not sure if they're going to be able to finish and complete or start and complete their match, Warenka and Djokovic, but we'll see. Because it is, I think it is. What time is it? London time. I'm checking on my phone. By the way, Swiatek was able to consolidate 4 2 in this first set. London time is 7 o'clock. So. They have about four hours or so to play. It might happen. It might happen. Interested from you guys that are watching, just to poll the audience, do you guys think Sweatek? has a chance of lifting this trophy. And if she does, how do you think that would change the landscape of women's tennis? Because that would mean she now has a slam on all three of the major surfaces, clay, grass, and um, hardcourt. So interested to hear from you guys. Do you think she'll win this one? And if she does win it, how does that change the landscape of women's tennis?
So we got to take dominating from the middle of the court here with her forehand and Martic unable to get it back over the court. Love 30 on Martic's serve. I think if we got to take breaks here, that makes her super, super, super comfortable. March here, the second serve. Let's see if she can fend off Igor Swiatek, clearly trying to make her mark in this match. Second serve, Martich. Double fault, Martich. Interesting. Interesting timing, too. By the way, guys, I'm trying to adjust the scoreboard, by the way. I'll do it after this change of ends. March it again with the second serve. So we got to take all over on the backhand, and March can't handle on the slice. 5 2 Sweatek. All right, let's get back into that conversation I was happening, having, by the way, about what happens if Sviatek wins Wimbledon. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, Adrian says, Sviatek second serve certainly looks very vulnerable in this match so far. I think that's always been a point of vulnerability in her game. She just knows how to hide it pretty well, obviously, because she's world number one. Uh, Derek says, I think she will win Wimbledon, just not this one. Fair call. Who do you think will win this one if it's not Sviatek, Derek? Michael says she has a chance if she does nothing changes in women's tennis, in my honest or maybe humble opinion. Um, I think that's a fair way to look at it, Michael. Um, I just think that that puts her, that sets her apart because not that many people in tennis have a slam on every single surface. And the people that do are considered legends in the sport. So Legends, icons, all of the above. So if she does do that, I think that'll put her in rare air, especially to think that she's not even 23 years old yet. So I think it changes her career and how people look at her in terms of what she's achieved in tennis. I think that's that, that'll be for sure. All right, let's see if I can share the correct scoreboard here. All righty. I think that's better. You guys like that? All right, Ghosty said, by the way, Sweatik is serving to close out this first set 5 2. Love 15 on her serve right now. Let's walk through this point. Ah, uh, not a great point to, to pop in on. Sweatik had a second serve and a forehand unforced error. Love 30 on her serve. Ghosty, I'm going to go back to your comment, but I just said that I just saw you guys. We can't see the score. Let's see. Let's see how I can possibly change that. Let's see. Ha, does that work? I think that works for everybody involved, right? Not the best, but not the worst. You guys can see it. I think we're good. Now it's good. Appreciate it. Good. Thank you guys for bearing with me, by the way. I appreciate the comments and the feedback. That'll work. All right. Let's see if I can get my stream back up, by the way. So I can give you guys comments here on the match.
ESPN for some reason is not showing the best player in the world. Interesting. Who is who are they playing? Who are they showing on ESPN? Because this match is on center court, by the way. And so we gotta take has a set point in the first set. They were just showing Andy Murray and Stefano Sitsipas, who played five sets over two days or a little under 24 hours or so. And maybe under or over, who knows? Um I'm not sure why they're not showing her. I'm trying to think who they maybe they're showing Kennan. Okay. Derek says they're showing Kennan mostly. I mean, I feel like ESPN in general. Let's see if I can walk you guys through this set point for Ego, by the way, before I talk about ESPN. Close serve from Ega. Wow. Good return from Marte. She puts it away. Deuce. Deuce here. ESPN is like Burger King. You can have it your way. <laughs> Interesting. Is the scoreboard actually working for you guys? Is it clicking? Is it is it not working? No, nope. I just saw the time move, so I think it is working. <laughs> There we go. Well, yeah, it's working. Okay, good, 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 good. It's hard trying to keep all this moving, you guys. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard, but it's not impossible. We can do it. So we got to take set point again. Let's see what she can do. Closes it out off of an unreturned first serve from... Martic, fairly straightforward first set. Some hiccups from Swiatek, which I feel like are part of the course for her game on grass at the moment. But I still think in general, her tennis level is right where it should be. She's number one in the world. There's two people on her heels. Matter of fact, Sabalenka can actually lead this tournament world number one. So I feel like she's playing like a world number one and... Even with her not being completely comfortable on grass, her overall tennis level is pretty much head and shoulders above most of the field. So first set, Swiatek, fairly straightforward. All right, let's get into some of this ESPN commentary because I don't know if you guys know, um, I am in the United States and ESPN has pretty much prime broadcasting rights for Wimbledon. They share it on ESPN. ESPN2, ESPN3 even, and also ESPN+, Plus. if you know, you know. And I feel like in regards to Kennan, right? Let me check on that score. Svitolina and Kennan are at 6-5 in the first set. I don't have the ESPN coverage, like main flow coverage on right now because I'm focusing on Iga. But I can imagine that ESPN is trying to, and I, they do this often if you really pay attention and watch as much tennis as I do. ESPN will love to try to create and build a narrative around a player, especially an American player. And if I'm looking at everyone else on the schedule that's playing singles right now, like Iga's playing singles right now, world number one against the 30th seed, she should win that. Anj Jabour, last year's finalist, just won against a qualifier 6 1 6 1 in under 50 minutes. I can imagine that they probably didn't want to show that match um, just because it wasn't a, a household name Anj Jabour was playing. Chapovalov is also on court two. He's up two sets to one over Liam Brody, four all in the fourth set. Chapovalov is a flashy player, but then you settle, you settle down a little bit further, go down further. You got Svitolina versus Sophia Kennan. Sophia Kennan won the 2020 Australian Open. She is the she she began the women's singles decade of Grand Slam champions, and her ranking has plummeted since then. She has not played great tennis except for that getting to the COVID October of uh, Roland Garros final. She got there. She played good tennis. Lost to Swiatek. And 
not much sense. So I feel like they're helping to build the narrative around, hey, here's this comeback former Grand Slam champion, and here we are. <laughs> Happens all the time. Happens all the time. But I mean, I'm not necessarily against the Sophia Kennan comeback or people trying to push that narrative. I feel like her game could fit right on into the rest of the top 30. I really do think it could. Maybe even beyond that, I feel like 30 is where I, um, I, uh, I try to like ballpark people's comeback. Because if you get in the top, if you can sit in the side in the in the top 30, you're doing something right. So, hey. Hi, Manor. Thanks for jump, jumping in. True about the internet. Internet is an interesting place. That's for sure. Derek says ESPN could make Iga a story by showing her dominance. Yeah, very, very true. And I'm going to click back into this We Gotta Take match in a while. Nothing tremendous happening yet they're in the opening game of the first set um so we're just having a good old conversation here i think that Iga, and again this is my american perspective Iga is a wonderful um young girl from poland right i feel like it's sometimes hard to get that that european and american culture to kind of mix because i'm i'm aware that she's a huge in poland it's just that in more American perspectives and settings, people don't really know her. I, as a huge tennis fan, I, I realize that she is pretty introverted, but also likes Taylor Swift and reading books. Those are the two things that make her appealing to a lot of people. It's just not really translating to mega star power here in America. And I'm not sure what it's going to take to have Iga be a mega superstar in America, but I feel like she's okay with where she is. And ESPN probably you know, is aware of all of that, of what I just said, and isn't necessarily trying to make a superstar out of somebody who's okay being a um, mild star, if that makes any sense. So I feel like in terms of Iga's celebrity, she's a mild star, but amazing tennis player. And I feel like that's fine with her. Maybe that'll change in time, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's see what you guys are saying. Shirley March needs to try and hold serve at the start of this set. Match can run away quick from here. Yep, agreed. We all know how Iga likes a bagel in the first or second set of her matches that she wins. So definitely could happen. I believe she's put together like 15 or so bagels this season. I believe. Not quite sure. Looks like March is just trying to hold here in this match to get her off to a better start in the second set and kind of put away that wash uh, in the first set because she lost four games in a row in that first set, by the way. So definitely momentum is with Suiatek. that Serena has built. She's been playing, she had been playing tennis from the mid to late nineties all the way into the 2020s. Like that's a long time, you know? So um, can you guys not hear me all of a sudden? Did I mute myself? Hold on, hold on.
Can you guys hear me now? I did some wiggling on my connection. Am I back now? I think Ghosty will tell me if I'm back. Hi, Peaches. Hear me. All right, there we go. But yeah, as to wrap up that whole conversation about Suyatek and celebrity, I feel like her celebrity is is not outpacing her actual potential as an athlete. And I feel like she's leaning into the fact that she's going to be a tennis player for many more years and all that other stuff will come. You know, I feel like Serena, just since we're talking about her at the moment, Serena enjoyed like the athletic component of being a tennis player. Obviously, like she loved competing. And I feel like she loved the celebrity part of it. So all of that culminated together into the phenomena that we got called Serena Williams playing tennis. So, yeah. Serena was literally, um, <laughs> like, if you go back and watch certain movies and television shows and stuff like that, Serena did all of that for a certain part of her 20s in her career. So all of that helps to create a narrative of somebody being larger than life. And, you know, maybe Igus we have to take, will do some commercials and have brand ambassadorships, but you, you really have to kind of put in the work to become a, a huge household name. And Sviatek's only been around as a dominant force for about two, maybe three seasons now. So, hey, it's not a, that's not a large amount of time in the grand scheme of things, especially compared to some of the other former world number ones we've had, like Sharapova and Serena and Venus and Ivanovic and Wozniacki, who were really, you know, in the, in the women's tennis leadership positions as world number one or what have you and did it for a long time. So that's where we are with that. Fame can be a lot of pressure, Casey says, and I agree. It can be. Some people just can't seem to juggle all of it. And nor should they be if they don't want to want to or have to or am interested in the fame. I will so say, though, about Iga Swiatek specifically, as I go back into this match, her branding has taken a step up with the fact that she's with the brand that Roger Federer has invested with on. She switched from Asics to on in the middle half, beginning half of this season. And that's a, you know, that's a move in the right direction as far as getting connections with other people who have bigger stars than you and being known for something. So if on if if the brand on keeps growing, then that might help Igus Wiatek's star power. So we'll see. <laughs> 30 all Swiatek, by the way, serving. Again, nothing too eventful happening. I'll check in very, very soon to give you guys a walkthrough of what's happening in the matches or in the actual matches self let's see <laughs> ghost said serena and venus were interesting though <laughs> yeah they lived interesting lives that's for sure still do Iga is elite alexander lawrence love that name by the way she is an elite player number one in the world and she is for a good reason she has a game point, by the way, to level up this set early on one all. If you, as you can see from the stats on the score, she's really dictating, as a lot of people would have probably guessed before this match started. Uh, she's outpacing in first serve percentage, first serve points one, second serve points one, winners to unforced errors. She's really dictating, and um, Martich is just on her back foot trying to keep up. So. So we got to take holds one all in the second. <laughs> Gary, I see you guys are having good conversation in the comments. By the way, I appreciate that. I appreciate that you guys are engaging in the comments. That gives me more to talk about, talk to, and talk around this lovely match here at Wimbledon. So I appreciate it. Snehill, a career grand slam makes you one of the greats in my book, but you can still be considered top shelf without it. Very true. There are scores of players who reached the heights of the game but couldn't win one slam. Yeah, I agree. I 
I agree. Ash Barty, according to Adrian, left the tour, and no one else was really consistently good until Swiatek, I suppose. Barty left a bit of a vacuum. She did. I, I agree with that. She left a, a vacuum because if I remember correctly, uh, she she ended or she announced her retirement in between Indian Wells and Miami of last year or thereabouts, either the beginning of Indian Wells, but before, before Indian Wells finished with Miami started, I believe that's where Ash Barty made that announcement. And Swiatek was already playing for the world number two ranking at Indian Wells last year between her and Sakari, the winner of that match and that championship would have been number two in the world. And then before we know it, that the winner of that match eventually put themselves in the space to become world number one because Ash Barty yanked her name off the rankings. And Ash Barty was the defending champion of Miami. So there was a um, window of opportunity that was made wider by Ash Barty's departure from the tour. And Swiatek basically made it seamless. Because if you guys really remember, like I don't know how long some of you have been watching tennis, but something very similar happened back in 2008 when Justine Inner retired in the middle of the season before the French Open, and she removed her her rank she removed her ranking points and her name off of the WTA system, and from that, Ana Ivanovic got to world number one. Um, immediately following that. Sharapova got to world number one based off the fact that there was no number one ahead of her, I believe, or something along those lines. Ivanovic won the French Open, got to world number one. Ivanovic and Sharapova went back to back for a little bit. A little bit. Then um, Serena got in there. Yankovic got in there for the first time. Safina benefited from that as well because she got to world number one towards the beginning of 2009. Um so that really, like all of those names I just listed, definitely took advantage of the fact that Inna got to, um, or not got to, she walked away from the sport. Whereas with Ash Barty, there's been some shifts, but for the most part, no one else, not even the most part, definitely, no one else has been to world number one except Iga Swiatek. So I feel like it's fair at this point to um, mention that she's been dominant, you know? I feel like she's sealed the vacuum a little bit more. People give her credit for but I do think Sabalenka and Rabakina are on her behind. I'll say that. <laughs> and a win here at Wimbledon would definitely take her far as far as being able to realize that she can compete with the best on every single surface and kind of back that stuff that's in the back of her head. Like, well, maybe I'm not the best grass court player. If you win Wimbledon, <laughs> you are doing something right. Break point eager, by the way, in this third game of the second set. Let's walk through that a little bit if we can. Uh, you guys are putting some results in the comments. Appreciate that. Oh, uh, Swiatek wasn't able to capitalize off of that break point. Deuce won all second set. Pretty loose point from Swiatek to not capitalize on that break point. But I feel like that's one of the best things about her game is that even if she puts in a quote unquote loose point, she's right back into it, you know? So um, she's a competitor. No matter what people can say about her, she is a really, really strong competitor. There's been moments where, you know, Brabakina in Australia and then even Krychikova earlier in the year in Dubai did something special in terms of just being able to like wipe her off the court and that kind of started the narrative of you know people being able to overpower Swiatek but I think she hands she she hangs on her own and she's um more than capable of winning this match obviously and going on to do some damage here in this tournament at Wimbledon game point and good resilience from Petra Martic by the way game point here at one all and she she able to she's able to hold excuse me two one Martich. Good for her. She's trying to put her head down and make this competitive as she can because we all know the Iga Swiatek Bakery is out. Even though she doesn't like that. What do you guys, we were talking about um, uh, her star power. Do you guys think that it would be 
good if she like leaned into the fact that she's often bageling and breadsticking people. Because I mean, Iga's Bakery has like a nice little name or nickname to it, I guess. But I can also see, as she has said in her press conferences, it's a little disrespectful to her, her opponents. But I mean, you know, she's not doing anything better than what they possibly could be doing to have that result. So I don't know. It's kind of like tongue in cheek a little bit. <laughs> Ghosty is quite funny. This is good, though. The, the Nora Eubanks match was flames, much more intriguing than Murray Sissipas. I think the reason that Murray Sissipas was intriguing on paper was is because a lot of people feel that Murray's greatest shot to win another Grand Slam or to go deep in one is here at Wimbledon. He's a two-time former champion, right? And Sissipas is not has not been that comfortable specifically at Wimbledon and on grass at large. So it was a a toss-up match, but I think he really got the short end of the stick with the timing of when they went on the court the first time. And then on top of that, Murray and Sissy Paz don't play short points that often, so it was always going to be a pretty arduous match. And having to come back the next day after having the momentum that Murray did and being of his age and having the bionic hip, and all of that stuff, I think his momentum just got. So, feel for Murray. Good win for Sissy Pass, and yeah, we'll see what we'll see what Murray does moving forward because I think he's ever so close to being top thirty-two and getting a C possibly at the U.S. Open. But I feel like he has to extend so much energy in even the ATP level matches to get to that ranking that he wants to be seated at majors. Who knows how much he's going to have in the reserves once he actually is required to go best of five sets. So yeah, I don't, I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Derek just said Murray's body can't handle seven matches. best of five. It, it's a, it's a big task. It looks, it looks like a really big task for him. I don't, and I think Murray is such a competitor and, you know, has obviously been at the top of the game that it's, it's maybe hard for his mind to accept that. But um, it is what it is. Sorry if you're a Murray fan. I, I like Murray, but yeah, I don't, I don't see him getting to the final weekend of a major with the game he currently has as opposed to where his game stacks up with the rest of the field. Just looking at it that way. Let's see. So we got Tech cruising in this game, 30 love trying to uh, assert her dominance again in the second set. I'm interested to see what it would look like if she creates another break point for herself in March's service game. Snehill says, Miles, I struggle to see Alcaraz beating prime Berrettini on grass. Unless Berrettini has fitness issues, he looks in full flow again. I do have to say, that's a good, that's a that's a really good point, because Berrettini actually beat Demonar this, uh, this afternoon, and I believe he did so in... I don't want to lie to you, so let me look down and, and look at the score. But he did so in straight sets. That's big. 6'3", six, 6'4", six, four, six, four. Alex Dimonor has some grass court titles. Just got to the final of Queens Club a couple of weeks ago, losing to Alcarez. So that is a that's a that's a a huge win considering a lot of people didn't even have Matteo Berrettini as a threat this year because the last time he played Wimbledon, he got to the final and he has uh, four grass court titles, I believe. Two. Two in Queens, one in Stuttgart, maybe a second one in Stuttgart. I'm not 100% sure, but um, he's good on grass, and that's a hell of a performance. But I say all of that to say it for me personally, right? Uh, Sweetheart has two game points, by the way. Nothing, nothing too crazy happening in the match at the moment. For me personally, for me personally, it takes more than stringing together just two matches to feel like somebody's back in full flow. I feel like that's absolutely a step in the right direction, but there's more to be accomplished. And and I don't think Berrettini seems like he would be the kind of guy that's okay just getting to the round of 32 at a major, especially considering he's been to the semifinals and beyond multiple times. So, yeah. I'm, I look forward to Berrettini getting his getting his uh, fitness and his his tennis together because I think his game is interesting to watch. I feel like he he brings a persona on the court that I can vibe with. I just don't know if he's back yet. But Snehill, that's a good call. We'll, I'll keep an eye on him and see 
what he does in the next match. It's actually a good a good segue to see who they play next. Still game point, by the way, for Igor Swiatek. Oh, this is a good matchup. Zverev versus Berrettini, round of 32, Wimbledon. Yeah, and Zverev leads that head-to-head 4-1. Now, if Berrettini is able to sneak that one out, then, yeah, we can we can heat up the conversation that Berrettini's back in good in good flow and feeling healthy. That would be a that would be a much more of a stern test, I believe, than Alex Dimonor for sure. You guys are making some really really good points. Hey, Kavi, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, come on, stream. Be nice to me. Where was I at for a second? I lost my train of thought. Oh, we were going back to Murray for a second. Murray just can't seem to generate the power off the ground to attack the top players consistently off either wing. You can only improvise, drop shot, sharp angles strike and scamper so much. I completely agree. I am not 100% certain that Andy Murray... So there's a theory here, right? Oh, things have changed drastically, by the way, in the Sweet I Take Martic match. Let's let's tune back in and table this just for a second, because Martic has a break point on Sweet I Take serve. I think my stream might be a, a touch behind, just a touch, because it's so it's showing Deuce Martik's breakpoint, and looks like she was able to, yeah, Swiatek was able to fight that off, back to Deuce. Martic is asking questions of Swiatek. I have to say that, like for this so far, the score is very straightforward, but Martic is asking questions, and Swiatek is just is just swatting away the big points as she should. If it's a short ball, Sweatek is doing pretty good at the clutch moments of putting it away. So that that's that's part of the chorus of somebody that's world number one and just won a grand slam at Roland Garros, mind you. So game point for Sweatek to get out of trouble in this service game. <clears throat> this is really, really small, minute detail that I notice sometimes when I'm watching a Swiatek match. But does anybody notice the little twitch she does with her nose and her head sometimes before she serves? Everybody that plays tennis, and if you're really tuned into tennis, no pun intended, like I am, you notice the demonstrations and idiosyncrasies that tennis players have. And I feel like Sviatek has that really interesting one. It's like a little, just like a little nose thing, you know? Kavi, you're getting some love in the chat. I believe Kavi is going to be calling the match right after this one with Djokovic and Warenka, which should and promises to maybe be a hell of a match. So tune in and keep it keep it on game to love even after I leave. OK, I know some of you may not be my biggest fan, but it's OK. Kavi, if you're a Kavi fan, stick around because he'll have you for Novak Djokovic's match. Jane, pleased to see you in the chat as well. Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. Good question. As we got to save those break points, it's a good time to check in on some other scores elsewhere. It looks like Spitalina and Kennan are in the second set. Svitolina was able to take that first set in the tiebreaker, seven points to three, and Svitolina is up 3-1 in the second set. 
with Kenan serving, trying to keep that a little closer. So interesting. And I don't know if anybody knows this, but Sidalina was Sidalina uh, lost six two six love, I believe, to one of the not one of I think it was Linda Fruvitova on grass at one of the lead up tournaments before Wimbledon. So even though she made the quarters of Roland Garros, Fidelina did, which is really great. And she won Strasbourg and she's on the comeback trail. Grass, although it's so tricky because she's made a semifinal here, I just didn't think of Fidelina in the ballpark of second week contenders at Roland Garros, at, at Wimbledon, excuse me. So, but it looks like she's on the cusp of that happening. <laughs> Thanks, Kavi. I appreciate that. I'm a fan of yours too. Appreciate it. Martich is doing some pretty good things out there, by the way. Throwing in some serving volleys and just trying her best to keep Swiatek from getting in the very typical, like, back of the court rallies that she's so good at. Like if you guys watched March, excuse me, if you guys watched Swiatek's match prior, she beat Sarah Cerebus Tormo. And Sarah Cerebus Tormo is a decent player, don't get me wrong, but she didn't have anything to really break up the rhythm in a ground stroke battle. And she was also losing the ground stroke battles where I feel like um Iga versus Martich. Martich has a little bit more extra in the toolbox to try to disrupt Swiatek. But you know We'll see what happens in the second set. I feel like Martich is, not even feel like, Martich is a point away from getting to 3-2. So that's better than she did in the first set. And that's what we call growth. <laughs> Ghosty, I appreciate that. And I'm going to take your advice. If you guys can see my handle... Right next to my name, I'm Miles David. I am also the host of my own podcast called Tuned Into Tennis. I give really colorful commentary, I feel like I do, about the things that are happening in professional tennis and also making them tie into what's happening in the pop culture and entertainment world. And we get tuned into sports and all of that jazz all together as a digital community. I'm also on YouTube as well, getting and finding my things in that in this range. I feel like Game to Love and doing live broadcasts is definitely getting me well on my way in navigating YouTube. So thanks again to Game to Love. And then also I am on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the socials, you know, and all of it is the same at tuned into tennis. Feel free to message me if you have any questions about anything or commentary, discussion. Just don't be mean. How about that? Because <laughs> I'm not mean. So don't be mean to me. But yeah, that's me. Miles David tuned into tennis. I appreciate it. Amit. Amit said, where has Carino Busta been? Injured or what? He has been injured. And it's funny that you bring him up because Holger Runa beat Roberto Carabes Baena today. And it was uncanny to me how much Carabes, Carabes Baena's game looks like Carino Busta. And their names are kind of similar-ish too. But yeah, Carino Busta has been out. He may want to get back in soon because those... ATP Masters 1,000 points from Montreal are going to be up for defense in a couple of weeks after Wimbledon. And if he doesn't even try to defend those, his rankings are going to take a hit. So, yeah. If you're a part of the Pablo Carina Busta camp, I would start getting um, prepared. <laughs> getting prepared. Tuned into tennis is good. Can vouch for it. Love the Mashona Washington interview. Thank you, Ghosty. I'm trying my darndest to try to get another former player or current player onto the podcast and kind of pick their brains a little bit for some content. So I appreciate that and hopefully more to come. So thanks. Gary St. Laurent, I would have bet the house Kenan was going to knock off Svitolina, but I haven't been watching Alina's matches. Guess I need to get my butt in gear. Yeah. Not that you have to get your butt in gear, but I can see how you would have thought Kenan would have beat Svitolina, especially with the momentum of picking up her best win. 
since 2020 in Coco Golf. Um, but Svitolina is tricky, and she's up 5-1 in that second set. So she's one foot inside the fourth round of Wimbledon for another go-around. 15 all, by the way, 2-3 on Sviatik's serve. Again, nothing brewing yet, but I'm keeping an eye on it. That's for sure. Some really good passes here from Sviatek. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. I appreciate it. You subscribed the moment you talked about yourself. Yeah, I'm not the best at talking about myself sometimes. I like talking to you guys, talking to the community and just really like, again, no pun intended, being tuned into the tennis. And that's what I'm all about. I want to see our sport grow and really kind of get into the 21st century because we are. Tennis is in the 21st century, obviously, but sometimes it feels like with the coverage and the correspondence and all that fun stuff, it feels like we are ages behind everyone else. So, yeah, appreciate that, Gary. Let's see. What were we talking about? PCB. PCB's never had a run at Wimbledon, though. I'm pretty sure it doesn't get on well with the grass at all. He doesn't have a first round win at Wimbledon. So, yeah, don't know if he would have timed his comeback to even want to come back and deal with the grass. Sviatek holds at 15, three all in the second. There's definitely a little bit of back, more back and forth um, in this one. Let's see. In this set, I should say, in this set. I mean, Eubanks looks in really good shape. Fancy a deep run. I would love that from Chris Eubanks. I was watching his match earlier, and he's playing some of the best tennis I've ever seen him play. And I can't sit here and say that I always thought that Chris Eubanks would be the kind of tennis player to be in the third and fourth round of slams, because I haven't always thought that. But he's playing really great tennis right now. The way he won the title in Mallorca, was the best I've ever seen him hit that one-handed backhand. Of course, he's serving well because he always serves well. And he just looks calm, cool, and collected, like aware of what's happening, leaning on his experience in tight matches that maybe he should have won in the past, but leaning on what he gained from those experiences and just playing his, playing the hell out of some tennis. That's what Eubanks is doing, and I'm super proud of him. If he keeps playing like that, he is going to be a tough out for almost anybody, for sure. Daz, will they close the roof for next match? Also, pleased to meet you, Miles. Pleased to meet you too, Mr. Reynolds. Thanks for dropping in. Um, if I look at the forecast, I don't see a need for them to close the roof. Um, unless 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 the roof is directly attached to the lights coming on, but I don't think that's the case. So I don't think they're gonna close the roof. And I'm interested to see how much time they're actually going to have in the Djokovic versus Wawrinka match because it's eight minutes to eight at London and it only leaves about a window this big for Wawrinka and Djokovic to get on the court and start their match, depending on what happens in this current match, Swiatek and Marcic. Uh, Swiatek. Swiatek has love 30 on Petra Sir, by the way. So speaking of windows, there's a window for her, for her to break here and take advantage of that in the second set. So let's see what happens. By the way, speaking of Swiatek, interested to hear from you guys. Who do you, this may be like, Mildly obvious, he has break point three break points here. By the way, what what wing do you guys think is most dangerous from Sviatek? Because I watched her match yesterday against or the other day be between Sarah Cerebes Tormo, and I was really impressed with her double handed backhand. Her her forehand is great, but that backhand is even more solid. And Wozniacki said as much because I think Wozniacki must have had some experience watching Sviatek at different parts of her career early on. So. Yeah, interested to hear from you guys. What which ground stroke or which wing do you think Sviatek is better at? Forehand or backhand?
yeah, there was a double fault to start the game for Martic. And I don't know if there's much better to end the game because Martic has been broken. Swiatek is doing some really great hitting from the middle of the court, keeping Martic pinned back to the baseline, doing her thing with the forehand, dictating from the middle of the court. And Martic is just not um, on the same caliber at the moment. So, yeah, break for Swiatek. If you're a Swiatek fan, I'd be happy at the moment because she's timing the ball really great right now, up 4-3. So let's see. We were talking about Chris Eubanks. The one downside to Chris Eubanks doing well on the tennis court is we may not get much of him in the TV studio. He's a really good commentator. I absolutely agree. He's a really good commentator from what I've seen on the tennis channel. He's astute. He is comfortable talking about the way modern tennis is played. He has good anecdotes about the players. And yeah, I want him to be good at both. I think he can. I think he's young enough to keep playing at a high level. And whenever he feels like he's done enough and expended enough on the tour, I think Tennis Channel in any any station would be happy to have him because he is a good guy, a good guy to listen to and watch for sure. Ghosty, I did not know that Scrambini coached Iga back in the day, but I wouldn't. I'm not. Now that you say that, I'm not that surprised because uh, Scrambini is a good Scrambini is a good coach. So Iga had to learn from somewhere, right? <laughs> Derek says, I thought everyone said Iga was very bad at grass. See, that's the thing about um, people, and I don't know where you got, like, everyone from, right? But I feel like in the internet days of where we are with tennis fans, people are so hyperbolic. Like, sometimes they think one win equals amazingness, and then one loss equals, equals awfulness. And it's not it's not always that tied into each other. And I think Swiatek just didn't have enough time last year to make the transition from clay to grass. And also she had won 37 or 34 matches in a row coming into Wimbledon, which is great for confidence, but also that takes a toll on your psyche to be playing that much and winning that much. So I think we just saw um, Swiatek hit somewhat of a wall and play a tough opponent last year at Wimbledon in Elysee Cornet. But don't forget, I think this is forgotten, Swiatek lost to Anz Jabor in the fourth round of the 2021 Wimbledon Championship. So there's there's precedence that Swiatek can win three and four matches in a row to do well at Wimbledon here again. So and that's what she's working on right now. She's up 30 love right now, looking comfortable and astute on the on center court against Petra Martic. So yeah. I think it's going to take a good effort to get out of this tournament, either a bad day or a good effort from somebody else, a good effort from somebody else to get out of the tournament. That's what I think. Gary, thank you for answering that question. I rate Iga's down the line backhand as her number one weapon. Same as I think about Novak's. Okay. I think they both are good at defending on that side because they're so flexible and the open stance sliding backhand, um, cross court or down the line passing shot that they have kind of coined is is their that's that's their that's their bread and butter. I think Sweata can just create more angles on the forehand, but I think the backhand down the line has the punch. Both of them have punch, but I, I can see what you mean about rating that her number one weapon. I can see it. Sweata takes up a set in five three May the Suyatek fans rejoice. <laughs> Peaches. The TC channel calls Eubanks their guy. He is their guy. He's that guy. He's my guy as well. He's everybody's guy. Eubanks is the guy. <laughs> Somebody else, Adrian, again, Suyatek backhand looks more solid but the forehand could probably do a lot more damage when Suata gets a bit of time on the ball. Yep. If there's a ball sitting in the middle of the court, especially on a slower surface, she's going to take it on the forehand and give it a good ride. I think so. Kavi, yep. Iga did win Wimbledon Jr. She can play on grass without any issue. 
Yeah, I think the last couple of seasons she ran into players that were more experienced in her on grass. 2021, I believe, Anj Jabour had just won her first WTA title on grass. And Sweatek beat her. Sweatek lost to Anj Jabour. And then in 2022, Elise Cornet must have gotten to either the semifinals or finals of Bad Hamburg last year. And just in general, Elise Cornet has years and years and years of playing on grass court tennis. Um, or grass courts as opposed to Iga Swiatek. She's great, but she only played at that point like maybe less than 20 matches at WTA level on grass. So yeah. I think she's good. I think she'll I think she'll be good. I don't think it's I don't think it's, I don't think I would agree with like she can play on grass without any issue. I think there are people that can push the issue and make it hard for her, but for the most part, I think she'll be okay. She's two points away from wrapping this match up, by the way. Oh, you guys, I am on, I'm on New Orleans time. So central time, I did not know it was two o'clock in the afternoon. It felt later. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Ghosty, Daniel Collins has a better down the line backhand. That may be true. That very well may be true. I would have liked to see the uh, fourth round match between Sweatek and Daniel Collins. Though I would have, I would have. I mean, I'm not saying this to kind of like you know throw benches underneath the bus, but Collins and Sweatek just seems like a rivalry or a matchup that would get me more excited than Benchic and Iga. But I don't know if you guys know this or remember this, but I do. Belinda Bencic is not easy. Shouldn't say is Belinda Bencic has a Grand Slam victory over Iga Swiatek in the last two seasons. If you remember where, if you remember where Bencic beat Swiatek, put it in the comments. I'm interested to know if anybody else remembers where they played and where Bencic got that W. Because I remember, I remember. <laughs> Derek, you model. I, I don't know if I should be laughing at you. I'm sorry. By the way, Marchic has put a little pressure on Sviatek, uh trying to grab that break. It's 30 all on Marchic's serve. I thought Sviatek was going to just completely hammer her away, but um, he's putting up some some interest in the match. Modeling your serve after Madison Bringle is a choice, but Madison Bringle is also probably a much better tennis player than I'll ever be. So hey, I'll I'll let it ride. <laughs> This is the human condition. If it happens once, it happens. If it happens twice, it happens a lot. If it happens three times, it happens all the time. Think about it. Miles is so right. Hey, I'll, t I'll take that. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So we all take as match point, by the way. Let's tune in to see how this match point looks. Oh, she didn't get it. She didn't get it. Hey, crap. <laughs> you guys are really funny. I just have to say that. You guys are very, very funny. Ghosty modeling his serve after Kasakina because he likes to challenge. Hey, if you want to run, if you like, I feel like Kasakina should just like tap the ball over and just run back because that's essentially what her serve is doing, just starting the point. <laughs> Oh, I didn't even think about this. I forgot that this match was happening. Adrian, thanks for getting me back on track. Galan, I think it's Daniel Galan, has match point against Eam. It looks like he will win through in five sets. That's a big, 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 big win for him. And Marchich has game point to ask Sviatek, can you serve it out? Can you serve it out, Sviatek? Scrambini, see you soon. Take care. I appreciate it. Serve is different, but honestly, their rallying style is so similar that I don't care. But strangely, Iga's favorite surface is clay and Novak's is grass. I actually don't think my personal opinion, right? I feel like players, how do I put this? The nuance of saying what my favorite surface is sometimes gets lost 
between it, it gets lost in translation because how do I put this? Novak's game to me. I'm not going to say nothing fantastic about it is brought out through his playing on the grass because obviously that would not be true because he's a going for his eight his eight Wimbledon championships. He knows how to win on grass. But him saying his favorite surface is on grass or somebody considering his favorite surface being grass probably has, or I should say him saying that, probably has more to do with like him being a child and thinking that like Wimbledon is the most prestigious tournament you can win. For me, I feel like when it says like, if, if somebody were to ask me to describe Novak Djokovic's favorite surface, I'd say hard because one, he's a 10-time Australian Open champion. A lot of the moments I think of in his career that have kind of made him the champion he is is because of his exploits on hard court. So he's not bad on grass. I just think his game gives the best results on hard. And grass is like one small tier below it. That's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, there you go, Sneho. Miga's most comfortable on clay and <laughs> Novak is comfortable on everything. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Buskova wins first set over Garcia. Interesting because they played literally last year. Um, but Bus and Buskova got that victory. Ghosty, you caught me off guard. <laughs> Miles is struggling to keep it neutral. It's hard for him to discuss Djokovic without wanting to break some office chairs or something. <laughs> I'm, I, I think it's fairly, um, it's free game to know that out of the big four slash big three, that Novak is the one I'd put last just for personal preference on the tennis court. But, you know, I try my best. Try my best, ghostly. Try my best. <laughs> Peaches, I agree. I cannot believe that Fritz lost that match up two sets to love over Emer. I can't believe that. That was that was that was interesting, for sure. And that do that doesn't that doesn't make me feel any better about Fritz's chance chances of bringing home a major. Because if you can't like Emer's a good player, but Emer down two sets to love as a top 10 seed at a grand slam is somebody you should be beating like kind of with the period behind it. Like just like you should be beating them. <laughs> Very good to see Ons playing again, by the way, Martich is asking major questions of Iga Swiatek with a love 30 lead in this game while Swiatek's trying to serve it out. So let's see what's going to happen here, because things will get real tricky if we get to five all in the second set. Really, really tricky. So we got to take is world number one. That's exactly what she is. World number one. There we go. <laughs> Love 40, Petra Martic, while Sviatic's trying to serve it out. Wow. Cannot say I saw that one coming. Can't say that. You would have caught me in a lie. I do like the fact that Martic is doing the chip and charge. I feel like I love seeing people do that on, on grass. It surprises them because people don't really think about it in the forefront of their mind all the time. And Subiatek, although she loves the target, it's different when you're putting pressure on your opponent um, at the net while they're asking, while you're asking them, can you serve it out? You know, so Subiatek has to fend off these break points here. And she doesn't. She doesn't. She, she comes up short, five ball, second set. Much more interesting set here. Much more interesting. She netted that, that first forehand by trying to do too much. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's decelerated, over accelerated. I'm not sure. But Marchich is squarely back in this match. Five all second set. Hmm. Very ugly game. Not sure if the pressure got to her. She lost her concentration for a second or if Marchich is just doing the correct things on court. 
I feel like it's a combination of all of that. Alexander, I'm so glad you asked that because I don't know if I realized that Bianca and Jabor were playing next. I'm going to go with Jabor only because Bianca is a hard one to squarely put anything on right now. I'm going to go with Jabor. Both of them are, are difficult because they both have so many tools to deploy in a match. And sometimes they don't always choose the right one. But I think I'm going to go on in that one, even if it's Three sets. I think I'm going to go on. Yeah, Martich is feeling it. 30 love in this game here. And she's doing all the things she likes to do on the tennis court, which is just make it crafty. And Swiatek is giving her some free points. Do you guys think Martich squeaks out this set and makes it really, really interesting? Or can Swiatek settle down and close out this set? Swiatek is starting to get a little mouthy to her box, by the way. She's doing the shouting. She's talking to them, which I feel like is fair. Like, you know, when you're frustrated, your box is there and you're paying them. So, hey. <laughs> Ghosty, get back on board the BB bus. I called it the BB boat the other day when me and uh, me and Nick were talking on a different YouTube channel. Because <laughs> I felt like I felt like the boat was sinking and I didn't want to be on a sinking boat. <laughs> But I'll be there for bacon. I'll be there for bacon. I'll be there for bacon. Curfew time coming up. Novak better be ready to play tomorrow again. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be tight to see if they can finish this match between Sviatek and Martic and Djokovic and Wawrinka. It's going to be tight. Four game points for Martic. She's fist pumping. She's feeling it. Total points won this second set. 34 for Martic. 33 for Sviatek. Yeah. In a in a set that that's that that's close, and you have an opportunity to close out that set on your serve, you gotta take advantage of that. No matter who you are, if you're world number one, world number one hundred two, if you are in a, a set that that's close, and you have an opportunity to close out that set and the match, gotta take it. Gotta take it. This match could well go to a big tie break. I agree. I agree. I'm looking for my lip. There we go. BB boat. I'm my bad. I'm too far from water. <laughs> Not me. Water is literally across my yard way. <laughs> okay, a little bit of push back in this game from Sweetie Tech. Thirty forty. Let's see what Martich does here. I'm sh if if you guys are watching like on your own, I mean it's interesting because I feel like Sweetie is pressing, like she's trying to end these points too quickly, as if she doesn't have the legs. I mean, she has the legs, but it's almost like she doesn't think she can really rally or be consistent against Marchic. But she's worked her way back to Deuce, so interesting. She just has the better firepower. She can she's able to swat away Martich's second serves. And if Martich is putting in second serves, she's she's liable to be from the from the behind or on the back foot from the very, very beginning of the point. So yeah. And I do feel like Sviatik is one of the world number not one of the world number one. She is a world number one that has gears to her game. And she realizes, hey, that wasn't maybe a great game. Let's get back on it in this game. I do appreciate that about her very well because some players had don't have much recognition of like when it's time to really focus in. And Sviatik does that very, very well. And did it well enough to break right back. She's up six five in the second set. Good for her. And good from her, by the way. Way to just really buckle back down and right the ship. She has five return winners in this set, I believe. That's that's huge. Yeah, Marchich gave away a forehand to close out that game. Can't do that. 
especially after all the hard work Marches just did to get the break back and and save some uh, momentum. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, man, she's just too good. Eager doing eager things from 40 Love down. That's what that's what Eager does. I'm not mad at it. I think she can do it. I am sad we never saw a Iga Serena match. I mean, yeah. As a as a fan of Serena, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Cuz that would have meant Serena would have had to play her in 2021, 22. And yeah, that probably wouldn't have been pretty as a Serena fan. So yeah, I'm okay with it. But yeah, as 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 a, in terms of like a meeting of the generations, a former world number one versus current world number one, that is easy hype to build up. But not sure that Serena would have would have um, walked to the net and shook hands as a winner. <laughs> Snail. Novak just sent a message through a pigeon to Eager that he wants to get on the court soon. Can't blame him. Cannot blame him for that at all, actually. It is. Let's see what the time is in London. It's 8.15 London time. Yeah, they're pushing it tight. They're pushing it very, very tight to start, to begin and end that Barrenka and Djokovic match. Do you guys think Djokovic will be able to routine Warrenka in three sets. I mean, when I say routine, I mean like six three, six two, six four. You know, like let me know in the comments if you think that's going to be a routine matcher for Djokovic, or do you think Warrenka can make it interesting? So we got to take two points away, one point away, excuse me, from victory. Three match points on Marchich's on her own serve. Excuse me. Serving for the match, she did her eager thing. Six five forty love eager sweet I take. I mean that's where you want to be, getting into the fourth round of a major. You want to be dominating like that and closing out matches on your serve. <laughs> Peaches, I agree. I agree that peaks Queen Serena in her prime would have beak would have um would have beat Iga, but. I think we can all touch and agree that Serena wasn't in her prime in 2022 or 2021 when Swiatek was a top player or has been a top player. I don't, I don't I think we can agree with that. I think Swiatek is having a little bit of pushback closing out this match 40 15 second match point. <laughs> U.S. Open does generate a lot of electricity. The only thing, this this point just happened, by the way. So we actually could have closed out the match with a little dink forehand up the across court. Does anybody remember when Sweetie used to play doubles with Bethany Maddox Sands? I feel like she should. I feel like she stopped playing as much doubles. By the way, Marchich is fighting back and uh, asking Sviatek one more time, can you close out this match on serve? One more match point for Sviatek. I feel like her, her four-court game could get a little bit better. Just a little bit. Like the dinks and uh, the, the four-court stuff that is really about like your touch and feel and um, how you see the court and your anticipation. She can get a little bit better on that. If she gets better on that, I'm not sure, you know, what the other girls are going to be able to do. <laughs> so we got tech close is it out six, two, seven, five, definitely some hurdles to overcome in that second set, but mostly because of the way March has played. So we got tech did have some loose points, but um, like the world number one, she is, she buckled up when it really mattered and closed out that match. Yeah, she got a little lucky that Marchich 
wasn't always the smartest in her decision making, but yeah, a match win is a match win. <laughs> Come on, Mark, just put up a fight. <laughs> Ika gets the win, straight sets into the round of 16 for the second time at Wimbledon, where she will face Belinda Bencic. Oh, no one told me. I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone told me in the comments when was the last time that Bencic beat Swiatek, and that was the 2021 U.S. Open. So if you guys um, feel like doing some research. I think YouTube actually has the full match or either the extended highlights or something thereabouts of benches getting that W over Swiatek. And that should give you some frame work of how that match should look on grass. So, yeah. Yep, Kavi, U.S. Open 2021. Blended benches got that match in three sets. So, with that being said, I had a really great time with you guys over the last almost hour and a half. I thank you guys for your engagement. You guys have been great. Again, my name is Miles David. You can follow me on socials at Tuned Into Tennis. You can follow my podcast and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I really would appreciate, I pr really would appreciate the engagement and the follow. And yeah, let me know what you guys' questions are about tennis. Let me know who you think is going to win Wimbledon. Um, and yeah, just Talk to me. I appreciate it. I'm always available. So, all right. Enjoy the stream. You guys take care. Enjoy the Novak Djokovic and Marenka match. I'll grab some popcorn and enjoy that as well. And I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.